The following video is sponsored by InstantMaddenCoins.com. The only place to get Madden coins instantly on every console and platform is InstantMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on everybody? Clickwood here back again with another 2017 season schedule prediction video for you guys. Today, the team that we're taking a look at is the Arizona Cardinals. And uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in these videos for other teams, make sure that you check out the playlist. I do have uh, an idea that I'm going to be doing one of these for every single team prior to the season starting. Hopefully, I'm able to get that done. Uh, it's been a little bit more difficult to get these completed than I thought, but I'm going to do my best to get all of them up before at least some. Sunday. So that's the goal as of right now. I obviously have the Chiefs and the uh, Patriots already completed. So if you guys want to go check those out, go ahead and do that. And if you guys, again, are enjoying these videos, make sure that you drop a like on them. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And let's talk in the comments section. Let me know what you think about these predictions. Obviously, if this is your team, you might have a little bit different opinions than I do. You might have a little bit of bias. So try and keep that in mind. But let's hop into it. Let's talk about week one for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, now, obviously, guys, the Arizona Cardinals in week one are going to be playing against the Detroit Lions in Detroit. And I think this is actually one of the more interesting games of week one. The Lions lost a couple of pieces to their defense in the preseason due to injuries. But the Cardinals are actually looking healthy, and their defense could be honestly truly dominant this season. The one thing that I will say is that the Lions are a team that has changed the way that they play football over the past couple of seasons. They used to have the Calvin Johnsons, the Ndamukong Suze on defense. Obviously, that's not the case anymore, so they've had to do things a little bit different. That's led to Matt Stafford throwing shorter a lot more often. He's making fewer mistakes. He's not turning the ball over as much. He's just making smarter passes in general. I don't expect the Lions to be a great team this season, but I do think that they've got a good chance to knock off the Cardinals here in week one. I think that's going to be a little bit surprising for a lot of people. I think if you were talking about a neutral field, a lot of people would say Arizona wins this one. But in Detroit in week one, I like Detroit's chances. So I think the Cardinals are going to start off 0-1 to start the season, which is a little bit surprising, I think, to some people. So let's talk about week two then. We have the, the Cardinals obviously still on the road, headed to Indianapolis. And as of the time of this video's release, Andrew Luck has still not started throwing passes since his offseason shoulder surgery. He's been ruled out for week one. And honestly, I don't think there's a great chance that he plays in week two. That should be absolutely horrifying for Colts fans. Scott Tolzien is not Andrew Luck. I'm not even sure he's an average backup quarterback, to be honest with you. If Andrew Luck is not back, and I don't think he will be, this should be a very easy win for the Cardinals, even though it's in Indianapolis. I mean, we could be talking about the Cardinals completely shutting out the, the Colts in this one. I, I don't think this game is going to be particularly close, to be honest with you. If it is, it'll be because the Cardinals offense is kind of starting off slow early in the season. But as far as defensively, I would be very surprised if they allow more than 14 points if Andrew Luck is not playing in this one. So let's talk about week three then as the Cardinals finally get a home game, this time against the Dallas Cowboys. And the Ezekiel Elliott situation is still a huge question mark as of right now. There's, there's plenty of reason to believe that he won't be available for this game. But there's also some interesting information that could lead to this suspension being entirely dismissed. I say that as a Dallas Cowboys fan in, in full disclosure. I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen regarding this. But if Ezekiel Elliott does play, this game is extremely interesting. The Cardinals typically win games with their dominant defense. But the, Car the Cowboys are a team that just runs the ball so effectively. And Dak Prescott is one of the safest passers in the league. I mean, he was last year and that was as a rookie. So you have to expect that he's going to be like that again as a sophomore. So uh, definitely an interesting one. I will say the Cowboys defense is certainly so suspect at best, but their run defense is actually pretty good. It's good enough that I think David Johnson isn't going to just be able to take over this game. And if they can generate any sort of a pass rush, this could be one that is very difficult for the Cardinals. Even if Ezekiel Elliott doesn't play, this is going to be a close one, I think, in in Arizona. And honestly, I think that I'm leaning towards Dallas. And I know that's a little bit controversial, but I think the Cowboys are quietly a very tough matchup even without Ezekiel Elliott, for a team like the Cardinals. So let's talk about week four then, because the Cardinals are going to be looking to even up their record at 2-2 two and two if they can. And after three tough games to start the season, they finally get their first break of the season here in week four. 
San Francisco is still looking for an identity on offense, and I think Kyle Shanahan should be an improvement over time as their coordinator or their head coach in this case, but it won't likely happen early in the season. Division games can always be a trap, but the Cardinals have won four straight against the 49ers, and it's really hard to imagine why they wouldn't be able to make it five straight here in week four. So there you have it, guys. That is the first start to the, the season schedule, 2-2 two and two for the Cardinals. I do think that they're definitely going to be a good team. So let's head into the second set of games, and that, of course, is going to be Week 5 here as they head to Philadelphia to play the Eagles. And there's a real case to be made that the Cardinals should be able to start the season at 5-0. and If you really look at each of these games, all of them are winnable. But heading on the road to face a young, hungry team like the Eagles is going to be very, very difficult. The Cardinals went 3-5 and five on the road in 2016, and they didn't win a single road game outside of the NFC West. A lot of people don't realize that. The Eagles were a train wreck on the road in 2016, but they finished 6-2 and two at home. So I actually like Philadelphia in this one. They have a very good offensive line, and they should be able to actually move the ball at least somewhat effectively against this Cardinals defense. So in Week 6... The Cardinals are again going to be looking to even up their record at 3-3 three three if they can. And this should be one of the more entertaining games of Week 6 as the high-powered Buccaneers offense heads on the road to challenge the Cardinals. The Cardinals actually completely demolished the Buccaneers in 2016, and that game was in Tampa. This time, the Cardinals will be the hosts, and I think their chances of getting another win look pretty good. Jameis Winston threw four interceptions in that game last year, and he truly looked confused against a high-level defense like the Cardinals. He does have a full year since that game happened to improve, but it's hard to forget the beating that the Cardinals gave him this last game that they played. So I have the Cardinals winning this one and evening their record at 3-3, three and three, heading into the final game before their bye in Week 7 in London against the Los Angeles Rams. Now, this game on paper looks like an easy win for the Cardinals at first glance. But what's interesting is that the Rams have actually beaten them twice in the past two seasons. Both of those games happened in Arizona. These teams are going to travel across the sea for this game, which typically benefits the more disciplined team. And I think that'll be the Cardinals. This could be one of the uglier games of the season for the Rams offense. I mean, we could be talking about a bunch of interceptions, tons of sacks, things like that. So I like the Cardinals to win this one fairly easily and head into their bye week at 4-3. and three. Now, coming out of the bye week in week 9, they're going to be back against the 49ers, this time in San Francisco. And if they got the win earlier in the season, that'll be 5 straight against the 49ers. The lack of offensive firepower for San Francisco just does not match up well against an elite defense. And David Johnson also completely destroyed the 49ers in 2016, compiling 286 total yards and four touchdowns against them in two games. Now, while San Francisco should be better at home, and I think that their offense is going to continue to get better and better throughout the season, I still feel like this should be a fairly easy win for the for, for the Cardinals coming out of their bye against a division foe, even though it is on the road. So that means in Week 10, they have a huge matchup against the Seattle Seahawks. Really, in my opinion, the only other team in this division that has a real shot of winning the division. And I will say it's hard to pull anything from the two games that these two teams played in 2016. They actually tied in the first game with each team only scoring six points. And obviously, they neither team scored in the, the overtime either. So that meant that both offenses exploded Oddly enough, in the second game, where they scored a combined 65 points with Arizona narrowly edging out Seattle with a three-point win in that one. The one thing I will say is that these two teams were pretty evenly matched last year, and that was with Arizona actually having quite a few injuries. I will say again, granted, Seattle also had quite a few injuries. But this game is going to be played on Thursday night football, which typically favors the home team. So I am going to give this one to the Cardinals in what I think is going to be a very close but very interesting game that everybody will be interested in for Thursday night. So in week 11, the Cardinals will go on the road to play in Houston against the Texans, a week 11 matchup that is going to be interesting against a team that I think is going to be hovering around 500, and it could be a potential trap game for the Cardinals. But I will say that if there's a team that is not likely to fall into many of those trap games, I think it's the Cardinals because they do have the veteran leadership of players like Carson Palmer and Larry Fitzgerald, Carlos Dansby, guys like that that should be able to prevent a letdown. 
One thing to watch here is whether the Cardinals offensive line can hold up for an entire game against the likes of J.J. Watt, Jadavion Clowney, and that Texans pass rush. They need to keep Carson Palmer standing up in this one. He's not a mobile quarterback, so he can't evade the pressure. And not just it's not just important for winning this game. It's also important to keep him healthy for the down-the-stretch run that they're going to try and make. I mean, this is a very, very important game for the Cardinals. Obviously, it's out of division, out of conference, so it's least important as far as the schedule goes. But in terms of keeping that quarterback healthy, this one looks like it could be a potentially dangerous one. So they need to make sure that they're keeping Carson Palmer making sure that he's on his feet. Maybe that means leaving an extra tight end in there. Maybe David Johnson's going to have to block a little bit more often than he normally would. But I think that this is going to be an extremely important thing for that game. So in week 12, they will again play another AFC South team, and that is the Jacksonville Jaguars, this time at home. And if you take a look at those records, look at how many wins that I think the Cardinals will have rattled off in a row leading into this one. Five straight wins. And veteran Calias Campbell did lead the Cardinals, or leave the Cardinals to join the Jaguars this offseason. And I will say that's a nice addition for the Jaguars defense, but I just personally don't think it's going to be enough for them. I think that they're going to have to be very, very concerned about Blake Bortles if he is still in at quarterback against one of the best secondaries in the NFL. So yeah, give me the Cardinals at home in this one, pretty much regardless of what the Jaguars have going on. I think it's going to be a tough one for them to get the win. So that leads us into the final stretch of the season. The Cardinals will have five games remaining starting in week 13 against the Los Angeles Rams, this time at home. And after winning the first contest between these games in London, the Cardinals will, I think, be certainly the big favorites to win this one in Arizona. I do think it's possible that the Rams have started to gain some semblance of an offense at this point in the season, but I still don't think it's going to be enough to steal one on the road against the Cardinals. This is going to be a very, very one-sided game in my opinion. Arizona should easily win this game. So in week 14, another home game. That's going to be three straight home games for the Cardinals, which is obviously a pretty good thing for them. And I, I definitely will say that It helps the Cardinals in their aspirations to win the NFC West to have this many home games in a row down the stretch. But the Titans are a young, hungry team that should be very much in the hunt to win the AFC South. And they also have an elite offensive line and a quarterback that doesn't make many mistakes. I think this is going to be a battle of rushing attacks. And if this game was in Tennessee, I'd be really tempted to give this one to the Titans. But in Arizona... Coming off of seven straight victories, I just think Arizona has so much momentum built up at this point in the season that I like the Cardinals to win this one in a very close game, probably also a low scoring contest as well. So potentially not a great day for your David Johnsons, your DeMarco Murrays, those type of guys for your fantasy football teams. But in week 15, The Cardinals finally have to go back on the road, this time to the NFC East. They're going to have to face the Washington Redskins, and man, I will say this is not an easy game for them. They have struggled on the road when they've had to go to the Northeast. It it has not been good. Worse yet, this could potentially be a cold-weather game for a team that is really not used to playing in those types of conditions. This just seems on paper like one of those potential letdown games for the Cardinals that will have reeled off eight straight wins if they've followed what I've done throughout the regular season. And man, the the Redskins quietly have one of the league's better offensive lines, so I like their chances in this game. I actually think that Kirk Cousins could have a pretty nice day here just chucking the rock. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy because he is dangerous with the football, but something about this game in Washington late in the season is... It just screams let down for me for the Cardinals. So I am going to go with Washington in this one, which will then mean that the Cardinals are 9-5 and five down the stretch in a very good spot to potentially still win their division here. But they have to go against the New York Giants, this time at home, thankfully. But still, an NFC East team difficult contest here. If things go like many te- many experts think they will, both of these teams are going to be in deep playoff contention heading into this game, potentially in line to win their divisions. And the Giants will have, have to head all the way up across the country to play Arizona. It's, and that's certainly a big advantage for the Cardinals. The Giants went just 500 on the road last year, despite the, the fact that they were 7-1 and one at home. So that just goes to show you how much more comfortable they are playing at home than they are on the road. And a big travel like this from one coast of the country to the opposite coast in 
south as well. I mean, that's a tough travel for any team. And on paper, man, this just looks like one of those bad Eli games where he just goes out there and chucks a bunch of interceptions, practically single-handedly loses the game for his team. So yeah, I am going to go with Arizona in this one. I think that they've got a pretty good team to match up against the, the Giants, despite the fact the Giants are probably going to be still pretty good this season. So that then sets up an important Week 17 matchup against the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle. Two of the top teams in the NFC West and probably two of the top teams in the NFC in general. I expect that this game could very well determine who wins the NFC West this season. Now, it could also potentially mean playoff elimination if things don't pan out exactly as I have them planned, but they're still the two top teams in the division. We could be talking about the winner winning the division and going to the playoffs and the loser completely missing the playoffs. Seattle is known for having one of the best home field advantages in the league, but what's interesting is that the Cardinals have actually won three of their last four games in Seattle. A lot of, of people will take that as an indication that, of course, the Cardinals are obviously going to win this one too. I'm not going to go that far, but I do think that it pretty clearly indicates that the Cardinals are not intimidated by the quote-unquote 12th man. Still, this is a late-season game for an aging team, and we've seen Larry Fitzgerald in particular slow down late in the season in recent years. So I am going to go with the Seahawks in this one in what I think is going to be the best game of the final week of the regular season. And I really do think that's going to be a pretty close one as well. So riding that eight game winning streak in the middle of the season, the Cardinals should waltz into the playoffs, in my opinion, with a nice 11 and five record might not be good enough to win the division. We don't know. I definitely think, though, that that is going to be good enough to give them the highest wild card. So there should be another division winner that they are going to match up against that maybe they've got a good chance to beat. But man, this is going to be a difficult run for the Cardinals. If they don't rattle some wins off in the middle of the season, they have some difficult matchups at the end of the year. And honestly, I don't think that they're necessarily the favorites to win the games early in the season as well. Carson Palmer and Larry Fitzgerald are nearing the end of their careers, so I think there's a case to be made that this is kind of one of those winner-go-broke seasons for a team, and Arizona, in this case, is going to be, in my opinion, trying to pull out all the stops, perhaps even making a trade or two before the deadline to give themselves a better chance to win the Super Bowl this season. So again, guys, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure you drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And make sure you check out the playlist to see what I have predicted for other teams as well. I will leave a link to that in the description below. And it should be on a rotation so that you guys can just continue to click through and find the team that you're interested in. So thanks again, guys. And I will talk to you guys next time.